but it's a pretty crisp, chilly April morning. But I'm out here photographing and looking and getting videos of some more of these spring forms. It's something I did last year with the short needle pine and if you're new and haven't seen that I'll link to that episode. But there are little fleeting bud forms and leaf forms. Uh, I mean it's great to see the full blooms, it's great to see the full leaves come out and the fresh green, you know, let everything grow. But it's also cool just take a moment to capture some of those fleeting forms as they come out in little buds and little sprouts. And like I did last year, I'm going to collect some photos of that and maybe do some journaling. I'll probably share some of that with you guys, and it'll be great. Well, what I thought I'd do today is take you on another studio tour. I know we did that about three and a half years ago. Some things have changed, but I just wanted to focus on technology today, which is something several of you have asked about. You're going to see a lot of things that I have purchased and experimented with. And if you're an aspiring YouTuber or just want to make some videos, some art videos for fun, you don't need 75% of what I have. I experiment with quality to get better audio, better video. I'm kind of a tech nut. I love uh, good cameras. Every year I try to upgrade something to make what I'm doing a little better in some way. And I just love new technology. I love experimenting with new technology. It's sort of the same obsession and addiction I have with things like pens and pencils and paint, okay? There are a lot of people who have made successful videos using just a phone. The phones today have really great video. But some of you may be curious about some things that I've done and I know some of you have been curious about some of the technology I use and we're going to take a look at that. So let's go on inside and do that. Alright so we're going to start here in my loft. This is my digital studio or my office. This is where I do all of my editing, digital artwork, photo editing, video editing, Anything having to do with computer, uh, that's a MacBook Pro, 2017 MacBook Pro, but I can take it anywhere in the house and often do. But when I'm editing, I dock it here, this 24-inch uh, monitor. I've had a lot of you ask about uh, this scanner or my scanning. Before this, I used a Canon, I think, 6400. This is an Epson Perfection V600. Both the one I had before and this one are excellent. You can scan flat artwork as well as uh, backlit things like transparencies, the slides and stuff. I have a regular mouse, but also use a Wacom video tablet. Uh, another question I get a lot is what do I edit in? And this is Adobe Premiere. Now Adobe Premiere is probably more editing software than most people need who are just going to do a little bit of YouTube on the side or video. Uh, but I am a subscriber to Adobe for Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, and the other apps. And this comes with it. So it makes sense for me to use this. It is a full professional editing suite. And I love it. It does a great job. Some of you may notice this. I don't know if they'll make it into other shots or not. But all these planes hanging from the ceiling were my dad's. He and I shared a love of World War II history, particularly aviation history. Neither of us are actual aviators, but my dad built all these. These are built out of balsa wood, so just in case somebody asks about that, this is he and I in my studio. He passed away about six years ago. He and my mom, my mom passed away about 18 months before him. Two of my biggest fans. They never got to see my YouTube channel. This is new from my last studio tour, is this big flat file. Uh, this I actually got for free. It was just a monster to carry off. The place where my wife works, uh, the art department there was getting rid of them. We said, can we haul it off and have it? And they said, sure. And this is my old light table that I don't really use much anymore. It just kind of collects dust. I, I store the Huey on light pads that I've reviewed down here. And if I use a light pad, I'll usually grab one of those two. But I mean, in the day, this was 
great. I used it and used it. In fact, I've replaced the glass once with plexiglass. My printer, a lot of you have asked about this. That's a Canon MG6120. They don't make this anymore. They've got upgraded versions. It is a photo printer. Uh, it's an all-in-one. I don't use the scanner for scanning high-res artwork. It does come with a scanner. I use the standalone scanner instead. It does a much better job, but it is a fantastic photo printer. And I prefer a photo printer to an office printer. The difference is the number of inks. Photo printers will print on photo stock. This is six color printer, whereas an office printer is usually just four. It does a fantastic job. I love the prints I get out of this. My next printer will most likely be another Canon. I have owned Epson printers too, so they do a really good job. And in the flat file I mentioned, I've got full sheets of watercolor paper, pads, extra stock on pads, and I just stock up on that stuff when it's on sale. Printer paper, other various forms of art paper, you name it. And this is my other uh, art table. I'll utilize this sometimes for sketching and layout work when my painting desk is otherwise occupied. So this is my digital studio. Now this is probably a familiar site for most of you. Um, and when you first come in to my studio, this is the vantage point, which most of you are familiar with. I have a camera that I keep here now permanently. I used to use this for various things, but I've gotten some other cameras since then. And I'm afraid my chronic experimenting addiction extends to tech as well. I'm sort of a tech nut and I love cameras and stuff and I'm always trying to get better things and wonder about things whether they're better. I currently have seven cameras, <laughs> not all of which I use. Two GoPros, a couple of camcorders, and, uh, and other handheld DSLRs. But again, my, my main head and shoulders camera position. This is a new addition uh, last year is this monitor which I can run pretty much any of the video cameras through to see what I'm doing right over my art desk surface. If you've seen my previous stu studio tour, you know I had a boom, a 2x4 boom here. I took that down and now I have this rack overhead. I'm trying to get above the light so it's not showing. That is actually an artist easel that I bought at Hobby Lobby. I was pretty proud of that. I had been looking to build a rack up here a lot. If you've ever been into a professional video studio, you know they have overhead racking where they can mount lights and all kind of stuff. And I wanted to do something, but we have this odd slanted roof and I knew I'd have to either suspend it from that or build it out from this wall. Well, I just sort of had a inspiration one day when I was at Hobby Lobby and they had these on sale. I got this for less than $75 and it makes a great overhead rack. And the media tray, uh, I use it to mount a ball head to and I can change the position of it. I have a couple of holes but it also slides forward and backwards. It's my overhead camera. This is my over shoulder camera and I built this addition to the easel to extend down behind my head and over my shoulder. Since I'm right-handed, the sheet's over my left shoulder. And this camera pretty much stays here. This is one of my newest cameras, and it's a camcorder because I need a camera in that position that can record without stopping. A lot of the handheld DSLRs will stop after about 20 minutes. This one, for instance, stops after about 20 minutes. It's annoying because I'd be painting along and not paying attention, and the video had long since stopped. It's like, ah! Yeah, so let me switch cameras here. So actually I can film with this camera for five hours, depending on the size of the memory card. You know, it's kind of a trade-off because cameras like that actually have a little better image quality in the video. Um, this one is pretty good though. This is, is better than the average camcorder and I was glad to be able to update it. And that extra no-stop recording time has become very, very important for me. But I... But I really have enjoyed this rig. And I can add, I can move the ball head. See, that's a removable ball head. That's a removable ball head. It can be mounted down here. It can be mounted up here. I could drill more holes basically anywhere. My overhead lighting is just the standard uh, two bulb fluorescent fixture, but I have daylight bulbs in there for balanced lighting. Now, because it's directly overhead, uh, when I have upright art, uh, it doesn't get the front of it real well, so I added this light here. 
which is just uh, another LED and a little clip-on thing. I've had that for years. I used to use it for tabletop photography. But this kind of illuminates the front of something. Again, over my left shoulder, since I'm right-handed and doesn't create a shadow. So when I'm on an upright easel, it illuminates more of the front. Yeah, so this is probably my highest quality video camera in terms of image quality. It's my main vlogging camera, and I use it uh, for that. I use it to take stills. This is probably my best still camera, and great for shooting reference. I shoot all my reference with it. I don't use it for a lot of process video, painting and whatnot, again, because in about 20 minutes, it cuts out. I don't like that. It's I, There's just been too many times I've gotten involved in my work and forgotten to make sure that the camera was still going. This is, uh, I call this my bird camera. It's just sort of a point and shoot. It was really not very expensive, but it has pretty good image quality. It just has a very small sensor. The reason I use it for bird shooting is that it has a super zoom. And it's good enough to shoot uh, reference photos for birds when I can. So that's just nice to have as a backup. And I've been using this for a while. This is a Rode video mic. It's actually designed to go on top of a camera with a hot shoe, but I put it on this boom here. And I can run this. I can actually run this uh, audio cord to that camera. We'll take audio input. This camera up here will take audio input. And this camera up here will take audio input. These two cameras will not, which is why I use them as handheld. Uh, when I'm shooting on a camera that won't take audio input, sometimes I'll record on this. That's my uh, Zoom audio recorder. But this is my main recorder for doing voiceover. You know, I could record voiceovers directly into the computer, but if I do that, sometimes my fans kick in. Um, this I could take out with a camera outside, and I could mount them both on, onto a handheld rack if I need to. And it just records really high quality audio. So yeah, that's that's sort of my tech setup. And it's just been working really, really well for me, and it just evolved over the years. Another new addition since my last studio tour was uh, this Tabaroy, which replaced the microwave stand I used to use. And both of these are IKEA pieces, and they work really well. This is just, just various stuff. I'm not going to go through all the drawers this time. I'm now using two pencil sharpeners. This one, the Exacto School Pro, and the School Smart. Mainly because I had so many people ask me what uh, pencil sharpener would work for fat pencils. So I wanted to find one and review it. I haven't done a video on it. This was the only review I've done, and this is absolutely fantastic pencil sharpener. This is the School Smart pencil sharpener and I have a review video on that if you haven't seen it and it does standard pencils well it's probably the best pencil sharpener I've ever used this one though is probably one of the highest rated pencil sharpeners on Amazon and it's good if you need a multi-size pencil sharpener so what I do is I set this aperture on fat pencils like Caran d'Ache or Faber-Castell Polychromos, for example, Albert Durer, they're all fatter than standard. And then I use this one for standard pencils. I kind of have an ad hoc organization system. I'm not very good at organizing. I just, when I need something else, I just get it and find a place to put it. Here's Reese. Say hi, Reese. Oh, he's napping. So here's another question I get a lot. Uh, tripods. Um, my probably most used tripod is this. This is the Dalica Pro line, and I use this for uh, easels and outdoor painting. I can put uh, my Peshad box, there's a Peshad box. I also have a flat easel that I did a tutorial on how to make, and they both mount to that. That's heavy duty enough for that. This is an old, sort of a backup tripod. This goes back to the late 80s, early 90s. This was designed to hold one of those big VHS camcorders, but I keep it around just in case I need something to hold a backup. It's really too big and heavy to pack out for plain air. This is my vlogging tripod. I use this like a selfie stick. So let me show you this one a little more close up. Uh, I, I like to use this for vlogging or shooting outdoors. It has this uh, sort of a ball head on it and you just rotate this wheel 
and you can point and just rotate it back and it locks. I'll fold it up like that and use it like a selfie stick. It's pretty light. Um, nestled over here is my light box. If I need a uh, big diffused light, I usually use this on my intros and my head and shoulder shots, but I push it out of the way normally. Just additional uh, floodlight for photography or videography if I need it. And a boom. But the only time I use this boom, uh, again, that was another experiment. That's when I was using GoPros a lot more and I don't use them as much as I did, but I can boom a GoPro basically over anything or anywhere. Yeah, I thought you might like to see this. This is uh, my portable stepladder. And that's really just so I can get up and do stuff up there in that rack. Um, but I also used to, before I had the rack, I strapped this uh, monopole to it where I could put a ball head on top of that and a camera. And that actually extends much higher. And so I can move this stepladder anywhere around in my studio space and have a camera sort of in space pointed down just about anywhere. I still use that from time to time. Mostly this rack kind of takes over for that now. This still comes in handy though, where I need a camera pointed down at something where a regular tripod wouldn't work so well. And it just adds a level of flexibility. Well, that's pretty much it for my tech tour. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. Thanks everyone for watching. Thanks patrons for supporting this content. See everyone in the next video. Bye-bye.